Hello everyone, it's time for another imperfect chess video. My name is Sean, and today we're going to be taking a look at making subsets of databases in order to uh, analyze the openings that you're working on, or maybe your own opening repertoire. I'll give you a small example. Um, here, this is um, the opening repertoire database I've been making that you've seen in some of my other videos. And if I jump down, say, to line two, uh, I normally have my reference database, Mega Database 2014 is my current reference database. I've got that up here sort of as a default of what I check when I go through and, and take a look at things. And I've mentioned before in the past as well, I'll take a look at the online database and I've shown some of the subsets that I've used. So a great example here is I use this um, crazy old move, Vogel Jubo's uh, variation. And I like to prepare for what is my opponent going to do in this, in this response. And if I take a look at Mega Database 2014, I can see Rook A8 to B8 is the common move. That is the book move, and that is uh, most common. And also, if I want to jump over to the online database, um, if I jump to the online database, which is here, sorry, it took me a second. I blocked out there for a second. Uh, we can see highly, highly, highly more popular. 845 games down to the 296. Um, of course. The online database and the reference database, Mega Database 2014, takes in every single game that they can get their hands on, rightfully so. So it's a huge cross-section of chess players of various, various skill levels. Um, I, however, am a terrible chess player, and I play other terrible chess players, and I have fun studying this type of thing as if I'm a great player, but I'm not very good. So what I like to do is say, ah, guys, like my level... How do they do? And I've mentioned this in some of my other videos. So I've got an um, intermediate database based on people of my level, and which are you know poorer players. And we can see here that when black is at my level playing, the actual more common move is bishop c8 to b7. And so the bishop comes down over here. And uh, what I need to make sure is that I have in my notation a line for this. So I'm ready to go, and it's not something that I can overlook. In fact, I, I could even make this the main line in my... And I think at one point I have... I've gone back and forth on making rook b8 or bishop b7 my main line um, for, my, for my, um, my repertoire database here. I mean, it's academic. It doesn't really matter. It, as long as you have a line down there that you're, that you're looking at or reviewing. I think I was probably biased that there's more literature on uh, rook b8 and more discussion around it. And so I kind of made that my main line. But the truth of the matter is, uh, according to the statistics, people at my level more often go bishop b7. Anyway, the reason I bring this up today is because I've had a few people reach out to me via YouTube and privately. Um, what exactly did you go through to make these types of subset, subsets? What is intermediate v4? How could we make that or take advantage of that? And I thought I could uh, show you today how I do this. And with, because it's time for me to make a new one myself, one of the things I like to do is not only do the people at my level, I also like to see what the experts are doing recently. And you'll notice if you go through here and take a look at um, you know, Mega Database, you kind of get this sort of hot field and best players. It's just kind of helpful. I'm glad they have it. But I really like to make my own version of what is hot. And it's the same way that you might make any other subset. So I'm going to work on that now. This is what you do. If you want to make a subset of, of games that fits a certain philosophy, poor players, players at your level, great players, or whatever, um, you follow these steps. At least this is how I do it. I'm sure there are better ways. But make sure your clip database is completely empty because we're going to use your clip database. So make sure that's empty. And Let's find your source. Now, you can go through, in order to make the intermediate games, I went through into uh, Mega Database 2014, and I pulled them from that. I'm going to make a new one. I want a database of what the top players in the world are doing this year. It's 2014 when I'm making this. So what is very fashionable right now for the various openings that they're doing? It's something I, like to, I just like to check on when I'm building my openings. Is there anything really cool at the top of the house is playing? Not that it would ever really apply to me, but... I like to see. So what I'm going to do is I have, uh, as mentioned before, I don't like to update my mega database every year. I subscribe to getting recent games, but I don't like to update mine. So I like to put my recent games in, a, in their own database. And at the end of the year, I'll get probably get mega database 2015, and then all of these will be inside all of that, and then I'll go again. So here I have about 250,000 games that I really haven't looked at. I don't sit down and review all these uh, at the end of every tournament uh, or like... like uh, 
uh, you know, as, as like a subscription where I, I check in these types of things. I use, like to use them as part of views, uh, which is what we're going to do right now. I'd like to open this up, and here's a list of all the games. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a filter. And I've been playing with the filters already today, and you can see one of the first things I want to do, since this purpose of this subset is awesome players playing recently. So what I want to make sure, I would like to highlight whether uh, I want one black or white. This is a, a white, uh, this is an ELO range, but it doesn't distinguish between black or white. And I wish it did, but it doesn't. So in this case, I'm building a database for my white repertoire, which means I'm really caring about black opponents. I'm less interested in what the white player's rating is. I want the person who played black, I want their rating to be within a specific range. And so in this case, let's say top of the house people, I don't know, 2,600 uh, up to 3,500, so over and above. So all I care about is if one of the players in this, in this subset is at this range, then I'm interested in the game, possibly interested in the game. I really want the black player to be in this range, but I'm going to handle that in stage two. So I want one of the players to be in this range. And now this is a fairly recent database, but just to be sure, I only want games 2013 and 2014. I'm in 2014 now, so I'm getting games in the last year, year and a half, um, or a little, almost two years now, I guess. It's almost the end of 2014, but academically. Uh, recent games, top players. So that's what this is going to do, and I'm going to click OK. And now I have a list of everyone who's met that criteria. But as I mentioned, I'm really more interested in players who've played black to be at the top level. So I'm going to click on here and sort it by black, and I can see uh, Magnus Carlsen, 2882. And I've sorted it by black, and if I go right to the bottom, I can see some, look, some, play some players playing black who are actually down on my level. Not helpful for what I'm looking for, uh, because they've been chosen because the white player happened to be above 2600. So this is how we're going to handle it. We're going to go up until black, is, this is a little manual, there's got to be a better way, but this is how I do it, because just because this is how I do it. I'm going to go up, I want black players at the 2600 level, and my cutoff is right here. I'm going to left click and highlight that, then I'm going to zoom to the top, and shift, highlight the top, and now I have selected manually selected only those games where black is 2600 or higher. I'm not even looking what white is playing. I don't care. I'm going to right click and I'm going to edit and I'm going to clip or unclip. And now I can close this up. Here over in my database I have, now that's odd, 10,000. What are the odds? 10,000 games exactly. That's, that's freaky. Uh, 10,000 games to the game. All those zeros. That's suspicious. Don't you find that suspicious? I find that suspicious. Anyway, 10,000 games in the Eclipse database. If I open this up, it should look familiar. I can even sort it by black, and I can see it goes from 2882 down to 2600. There they are. And it actually is 10,000 games. Huh. Um, there we are. So that is our clip database, almost ready to go. Uh, but what we want to do is make this more permanent. So let's build a new database. So I'm going to call this... Um, uh, so these are black opponents, so I'll call this Fashionable Black Experts. It's an odd name, but I'll know exactly what it means when I see it. So what I know is I'm talking about top of the house players. Let's get a cool, uh, I'm going to maybe a little bit of an informant look to it. A cool database of uh, recent, uh, I'm focusing on black experts here, and all I really need to do is drag and drop. On top of this, I'll get some options. Sure, bring in the annotations. There shouldn't be any doubles, update the rep, whatever. Fine. Let's click go and give it a second. Bang, done. Close. It looked like there were some doubles in there, it said. Uh, I now have fashionable black experts ready to go. And if I open this up, I've got all these cool games. And what I should be able to do now is if I am working on my playbook and I'm going through, you know, line one of mine, and I can go, this is, you know, I'm working this and I'm looking at that. Oh, I wonder, I wonder if any of these games, if there's anything uh, from the famous mega database, clearly where they're going. But if I come up to here, uh, I wonder if anybody, I can take a look at and see my intermediates and see how many games there. What about... Um, Fashion, oh, I don't have English test. It sh sometimes this pops up right away. It should be right at the top, and I don't have it right at the top, so this is what I'm going to do. 
this happens sometimes. So this is what you need to do. You need to go in, open this up, and um, fashionable black expert shows down, choose it inside the database itself. And then if you're going back to your other database, like your repertoire, hopefully, in theory, there's, probably, there's gotta be a better way to do this, but this is all I've been figuring out. In theory, fashionable black, there, black experts, there it is. And now I can take a look at what are the guys at the top of the house? And I can kind of, as I'm working on my database, watch and see where they go. Nine games went over here. Look at that, nine games. And uh, C6 is where I went. And eight games at C6. And I can go down D6. And look at that, two games actually followed in my, in my crazy. And I haven't actually looked at this. And there we go, one went Rook AB8. And you can see um, uh, the best player, so the player. You can see, the, as always, you can always see the games uh, themselves looking at it. But let's see, I'm, I'm actually looking at this now. The games are over here. Uh, and I, I didn't know this was actually the case. I had done this before, so I want to go take a look and see how that game turned out. But you can see now uh, I have the opportunity not only to take a look at um, my full database or my reference database, give it a second to catch up, but I also have, there it is, catching up. I have the opportunity to go in and take a look at people at my level, which I created the same way I created the fashionable experts, except I focused on the range that I wanted to focus on in ELO. Uh, and then, uh, as well, I have the fashionable black experts now, and I can see in the last year or two years, the games have gone down um, the route that, that I'm planning out for my repertoire. There it is. I hope you find that helpful. Uh, I'm trying to think if there's anything. No, I mean, it's the same. Uh, however you make a subset, you follow the same idea. Use the filter. Um, you can always do a second filter by sorting the white or black pieces. If you're just focusing, like I am, this is for a white repertoire, focusing on black players, you, can, you, can, you need that sort of second filter by selecting and then copying and pasting into the clipboard. And then you're, you're ready to go. I hope you find that helpful. Uh, click on the button, subscribe. More videos coming. Have a, have a great day, great evening, great week. Cheers, everyone.